so the intense obstruction is one of the common cause of acute abdomen it may lead to high morbidity and mortality if not treated correctly and on time it can be classified into two types dynamic and adynamic you will discuss further a dynamic dynamic is where paralysis is working against the mechanical obstruction in which there is a obstruction like a foreign body like the tumor in the lumen of the bowel and the paralysis is try to overcome on the obstruction it's called the dynamic and the adynamic is there no mechanical obstruction no mechanical element so the paralysis may be absent may be paralytic alias or the mesenteric vascular occlusion and the pseudo obstruction where there is no mechanical cause so the dynamic and the as we earlier discussed there is a mechanical cause so the mechanical cause may be intraluminal intramural and the extramural so the intraluminal is the impacted feces some of the patient has a chronic constipation and they present in the emergency with the distension and the mild pain and the foreign bodies gall stones and the bezoar okay and the intramural are the tumors and the inflammatory uh, structures in the inflammatory bowel disease in which their structure form and the extramural are the uh, the pathology outside of the human so the adhesions hernias valvulus interception and the tumors then the tumor from the outside of the human which causes obstruction and the pressure effects on the bowel so the acute obstruction the acute obstruction is usually in the small bowel obstruction with the severe colicky central abdominal pain distension early vomiting and the constipation these four are the cardinal sign of the obstruction which are the pain distension vomiting and the constipation absolute constipation this is the acute obstruction and the chronic obstruction is usually in the large bowel so the lower abdominal colic and the constipation followed by the distension initially the patient has the pain and the constipation then start to the distension in the chronic obstruction which commonly occur in the large bowel acute obstructions are mostly in the small bowel acute and chronic the patient having the long history with the on and off admissions on and off uh, uh, visit uh, the emergency with the pain and the distension in the absolute and the, the relative constipation but when in acute and chronic the patient has short history of the distension and vomiting against the background of the pain and the constipation subacute obstruction is an incomplete obstruction subacute is these when there is a when the patient has the abdominal pain distension nausea vomiting on the here is the absolute constipation and here is the relative constipation relative constipation means the patient only has the flatus but not the stool so the obstruction can be simple strangulation the simple is when the patient has the pain distension vomiting and the constipation but without interfering the blood supply okay it is strangulation the above features are the pain distension vomiting and constipation but uh, with those the patient has the impairment of the blood supply okay the associated with the hernias valvulus disruption mesenteric infarction adhesion in the band so it causes the gangrene of the uh bowel so it is a surgical emergency if the patient has the just obstruction or just you are suspecting the strangulation it is the medical uh, and the surgical emergency and you have to operate and you have to remove the cause and if you are not uh, able to diagnose on time the patient will go into the gangrene and you have to resect so the closed loop obstruction is the bowel is obstructed at the both proximal and the distal end so the causes around the percentage the adhesions are the most common cause adhesions due to previous surgeries are most commonly uh, involved and the tumors inflammatory uh, causes obstructed hernias interluminal and the miscellaneous are the 8% okay 
So pathophysiology is when uh, as obstruction in the small bowel or the large bowel. The small bowel is obstruction. The proximal obstruction is increased fluid secretion and accumulation of the gases. This both cause distension of the bowel, increase in the luminal pressure, vomiting because of the vomiting and the fluid secretion. Patient has a dehydration and the dilatation of the bowel. And the reflex contraction of the smooth muscle colic pain. As we earlier discussed, the pain is due to overcome the mechanical obstruction. It's a paralysis movement. So the colic pain is a paralysis movement of the bowel. As you all know, the colic pain also occur in the tubular structures. Increase passages to overcome obstruction is increase bowel sound initially. But in the late stages, obstruction is not overcome. Bowel atony in the patient is the absent bowel sounds. Distress obstruction is nothing is passed and the bowel collapses the constipation. So the patient has the an acute is absolute constipation. So the small bowel obstruction. If you are suspecting the high small bowel obstruction or the low and high, then the patient has early profuse vomiting, rapid dehydration, and the distension is minimal. If the patient has a low small bowel obstruction, so the patient has a predominant knee pain and the central distension vomiting is delayed. And the multiple central air flow level seen on the abdominal X-ray. So the large bowel is a early pronounced distension. Initially, the distension, then the pain, vomiting, and dehydration is the late. Initially, the distension and pain, vomiting is the late. Like the carcinoma of the large bowel. Diverticulitis are the valvulus. So, the symptoms. This is some explanation of the symptoms. The pain, colic in nature, around the umbilicus, the small bowel obstruction. As you all know, there is a, uh, the, how the nerve supply the patient has a periumbilical pain which is a colic in nature while in the lower abdomen when the patient has a lower abdominal pain suspect the large bowel obstruction if become continuous think about the perforation or the strangulation strangulation we have earlier discussed is the impairment of the blood supply of the bowel so the vomiting vomiting start early in the small bowel obstruction and the late in the large bowel obstruction Okay, as obstruction progress, vomitus alters from the digested food to fecalant due to enteric bacterial overgrowth, and the distance is the more with the lower abdomen. Constipation. So, as we earlier discussed, is the absolute constipation is the no fuse of the flatus pass, and the relative is the flatus pass. Okay, so. It does not apply in the retrosernia. Retrosernia is when the part of the circumference of the small bowel is trapped into the hernial sac. Okay, and the gallstone obturation in which the gallstones impacted and the small bowel. Okay, the mesenteric vascular occlusion, obstruction associated with the pelvic abscesses and the diarrhea may present with the partial obstruction. If the patient has the pelvic abscess, patient is no constipation, but patient has the diarrhea. So the dehydration is the the patient commonly present with the dehydration. If the patient has small bowel obstruction due to repeated vomitings and the fluid secretions and the electrolyte imbalance. Secondary polycythemia due to raised blood urea and the hematocrit. Pyrexia. Pyrexia is in not this uh, symptom of the intestinal obstruction, but when it occurs, it means the patient has a perforation or the ischemia, the strangulation. Okay, inflammation with the intestinal obstruction. So, when you suspect the patient has a strangulation, as we uh, discussed, the patient has this colicky abdominal pain initially, but if you think that the constant abdominal pain, if the patient has a constant abdominal pain, colicky is the intermittent type of the pain, but the constant pain, fever, tachycardia, tenderness and the rebound tenderness, the localized rebound tenderness and the shock. If these all are present, the patient, you can suspect the patient has strangulation. So it is a, as we I had told you before, this it's a surgical emergency. So the clinical examination, 
this uh, vital signs as a pulse uh, so patient has a tachycardia hypotension this is a sign of the dehydration dry mucous membrane decreased skin turgor decreased urine output this all is because of the dehydration the distension on inspection distension is scars of the previous surgery if the previous surgery is done before uh, then you can suspect the patient has the adhesions the paralysis masses hernial orifice the every patient with the intestinal obstruction you should examine the hernial orifice that maybe hernia or obstructed hernia is the cause of obstruction so the palpation of the tenderness masses rigidity and the percussion the tympanic abdomen due to gases in the bowel scultation is the high pitched bowel sound on the sudden abdomen initially the high pitch and then in the uh, absent bowel sounds so the examiner right number the masses blood feces or it may be empty in cases of uh, complete obstruction so the investigation is the baseline investigation in the cbc you can see the wbc count which suggest strangulation and the hyperkalemia or hypokalemia hyperamylasemia and the raised ldh is strangulation strangulation is the ldh and the hyperamylasemia and the wbc count is raised okay. and other investigation for the intestinal obstruction are the plain x ray abdominal x rays like erect and supine positions colonoscopy uh, to see the uh, causes like the carcinoma of the valvulus and the contrast x ray and the ct abdomen so the basic investigation with with the initially with the blood and the serum investigation other than all the x rays x rays abdomen the two views erect and the supine the in erect view uh, we have the this you can see here this is the lung field and here is the abdomen and these are the air fluid levels you can see here these are the air fluid levels in the small bowel okay. number of the fluid level is proportional to the degree of the obstruction the distal side of the small bowel suppose if the patient has the obstruction in the um, distal ileum close to the ileocecal junction the patient has no more air fluid level if the patient has obstruction in the jejunum there is a uh, few uh, air fluid levels this is the air in the stomach more than 3 air fluid levels are significant so this is the supine x ray it's a dilated small bowel of the jejunum you can see here this is the jejunum and you can see the valvuli conjunctus these this is the feature of jejunum you can see here it's a complete encircles the bowel from here to here you see and uh, the ileum is the feature less the tube tube but the jejunum has the valvuli conjunctus are you uh, remember this you can show on the supine x ray not on the erect on erect we see the air fluid level and the supine we see the valvuli conjunctus so the colon shows the hostel folds these are the folds you can see this is the cecum is the Uh, sh uh, gases shadow in the cecum and here is the transverse colon descending colon and the sigmoid colon you can see here this is the colon on a dilated colon and the barium follow through is a contraindicated in acute intestinal obstruction so we not give contrast obstruction so the treatment is regarding of the cause which uh, the patient is managed with the gi drainage with the nasogastric tube fluid electrolyte imbalance can be replaced the relief of obstruction is usually surgical to remove the cause so the like the patient we are suspecting the adhesions if the patient has a history of uh, previous surgeries previous abdominal surgeries so we, uh, the top uh, the diagnosis will be the adhesions so the adhesions can be managed conservatively with the nasogastric aspiration by the rice tube iv fluids nil per oral urinary catheter to check the urine output check temperature pulse two hourly abdominal examination eight hourly broad spectrum antibiotics and the painkillers 
this all is the conservative treatment okay so some cases will settle by using the conservative treatment and other need intervention so the surgery should be delayed till resuscitation is complete unless sign of strangulation or evidence of the closed loop obstruction the strangulation i have already told the patient has a impairment of the blood supply so it is an emergency you don't wait for the resuscitation so cases that show reason for the delay should be monitored continuously for 72 hours in hope of response resolution eg uh, the for example is the adhesions so adhesions in which we wait for the 72 hours but not more than 72 hours so the, then for the acute obstruction the sun should not both rise and set in case of unleave obstruction otherwise the patient will go into the gangrene of the bowel so the indication of the surgery is failure of the conservative treatment as we discussed on the uh, uh, last slide so the tenderness irreversible hernia strangulation if the site of obstruction is unknown laparotomy so assessment uh, laparotomy the laparotomy assesses the site of obstruction nature of the obstruction viability of the gut and the site of obstruction can be determined by the cecum if the cecum is dilated it means the obstruction in the colon if the cecum is not dilated in the normal in caliber the obstruction is the small bowel so the surgical treatment is the operative decompression required the dilatation of the bowel loop even the exposure this is uh, necessary when the dilatation of the bowel loop even exposure bowel wall viability is compromised or if susceptible subsequent closure will be compromised when closing the abdomen so the savalji company said uh, used with the serum muscular bursting suture you can decompress with the uh, so decompressor and the large bore ng the and uh, milking the intestine contents into the stomach and we as uh, suction attach with the ng to empty the stomach so the surgical treatment is the type of surgical procedure depend on the cause okay the once obstruction is relieved the bowel is inspected for the viability if non viable resection sex so how will we do the patient has the viable intestine or the non viable so circulation peritoneum and the musculature so the uh, the color of intestine is dark it become lighter when the patient has a viable intestine but it dark color remains visible pulsation in the no visible pulsation in the non viable peritoneum is a shiny in the viable the dull and dusted less into the non viable muscle muscles are the firm and these are the thin and the friable paralysis is may be observed in the no paralysis in the non viable and the patient the may have pressure rings and the paralysis plus pressure rings so you can see the color lustral lace and everything in the picture so if in doubt of the viability then the bowel is wrapped into the uh, hot pack for the 10 minutes with the increase oxygen and reassess for the viability we wait for the 10 minutes the rape in the hot packs so the color will be changed the color will be uh, changed so the resection of the non viable gut should be done followed by the stoma or the resection and then the anastomosis one of the option so sometimes a second look laparotomy is required for 24 to 48 hours in the multiple ischemic areas like in the uh, the mesenteric vascular occlusion so here you can see the adhesions and the adhesions and the proximal is the dilated bowel this is the adhesions the same, uh, normal bowel caliber and here's the large uh, dilatation of the small bowel so adhesion is the most common cause of venous obstruction peritoneal irritation results in the local fibrin production which produces adhesions due to previous surgeries so the bands may be congenital congenital obliterated by dilated intestinal duct and the string band following previous by bacterial peritonitis and the portion of the greater omentum so causes previous abdominal surgeries and the foreign material is the talc starch gauzes we use in the 
surgery, previous surgeries, infections to peritonitis and the tuberculosis, inflammatory Crohn's and the radiation enteritis and the patient get radiation for the other diseases. So the prevention. Good surgical technique, washing the peritoneal cavity with the saline to remove the clots, minimizing contact with the gauze and the covering the nosomos of the raw peritoneal surface with the omentum. So the conservative treatment is a curative. If not curative, patient not settled with the conservative uh, treatment for the 72 hours, then the surgery, the division of the band. So and with the surgery, you do minimal with the antigens. Must only divide the culprit, not the whole of the antigens. So treatment of the recurrent obstruction due to antigens. If the patient is uh, and admitting with the same complaints repeatedly for the surgery uh, for the uh, obstruction and you are treating this conservatively then these are the some options uh, with the repeated adhesions, adhesions, novel splication is in which the bowel is attached with the second part and there was the other loop and here against the uh, strengthening the small bowel and here is some tubes, the gastrostomy tube inserted in the hole of the bowel. This is called the intestinal intubation. So internal hernias, when the portion of the small intestine is entrapped into one of the retropental fossa or the congenital mesenteric defects, these are the site, paradiodinal, foramenular venslo, intersigmoid, very cecal transmesentric and the retro anastomosis in here we when we uh, do the surgery for the stomach and we uh, 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 raise the loop of the diagenum to anosmos with the stomach and this cause the herniation so you can see here is the herniation in the small bowel loops Goes in here in the mesentery, in here. So, so the uncommon the absence of the antigens. The treatment is to release the constricting agent by the division. So, gallstone ileus. So, it tends to occur in elderly. The so erosion of the large gallstones in the duodenum. The patient has the large gallstone in this gall, uh, gallbladder, which erodes the duodenum and sometimes the jejunum also. Uh, Present the recurrent obstruction because patient has a partial obstruction initially. The patient passes the flatus and the, some uh, feces, and the patient has abdominal pain. And the X ray small bowel obstruction with the air in the biliary tree, the mesh or adopic gallstone in the x-ray here you can see there is a gallstone in the small bowel in the ct scan so the treatment is the laparotomy and the removal and the crushing of the stone uh, here in the small bowel the enterotomy was done in the opening the small bowel in the, stum, uh, the stone was removed and the other uh, option is the crushing of the stone So uh, there is a food particles after the par uh, partial and the total gastrectomy caused the obstruction as the patient has uh, repeated vomiting. So unsheathed food can cause obstruction treatment similar to the gallstone. Remove the food particles. Bezoar, the trichobezoar and the phytobezoar. So in this, you can see here is a shadow of the stomach. On the x-ray, this is the barium tree, and the barium meal, and the barium follow through. You can, you can see here is the small bowel, and here is the pylorus, and the first part of the duodenum. This is the stomach. You again, on the CT scan, you can see the stomach. So this is after the removal from the stomach. And the worms. Ascaris lambricoides is the uh, cause the frequently follows initial of the, the patient has uh, taken the treatment 
So after the treatment, patient present with the obstruction, eosinophilia on the CBC, the worm and the gas filled bowel lobes. So this is again the worm ball in the small bowel. So you can see in the worm and the lumen. So the treatment is the laparotomy with the endotomy done and the removal of the worms. So the interception is a one portion of the gut become invaginate with the adjacent segment is the most common in children is the idiopathic 70% and the hyperplasia of the pyre patches in the terminal ileum can be initiating factor. Uh, hyperplasia of the pyre patches in the terminal ileum can be initiating factor. So in older children, interception is usually associated with the lead point, the macros, diverticulars, and the polyp and the appendix. In adults, the lipoma and the tumor of the bowel, it is composed of the three part, entering, returning, and the sheath. The entering part is called the intersubtent, and the sheath, the outer tube is called the intersubtent. So it is an example of the strangulation, obstruction with the impaired blood supply of the inner layer. The common is the iliocolic is a 77%. So the patient present with this colicky, abdominal pain, vomiting, and the red current jelly stool. Abdominal lump is a sausage shape on the abdominal uh, examination and the emptiness in the right leg fossa, the region, the sign of the dance. The death may occur from the bowel obstruction, the ischemia and, and secondary to gangrene. So here you can see the distal part is the proximal part, proximal part, one of the uh, part of the bowel invaginate into the distal. And this outer is called the intersuscipient and in this one is the intersuscipitum. So the claw sign on the barium. So the plain x-ray is the bowel obstruction with the absent cecal shadow and the barium enema, the claw sign I, I, you seen in the last slide. And the CT scan is equivocal cause of ileo -ilal interception. Small bowel mass may be revealed. So the differential diagnosis is acute enterocolitis, fecal matter bilis, uh, always present henocal varpara and rectal prolapse. These are the differential diagnosis. So on x-ray, you can see here is the small bowel dilatation and this is the intersubtent part. So the treatment is therapeutic barium enema, an infant. So this with the barium enema, which is relieved. It's unlikely success in the lead point of the patient has this uh, lead points like uh, point like the mucous diverticulitis, and the mucous diverticulitis, and the lipoma. So it needs surgery. The contraindication or the peritone uh, peritonism, like the patient has the symptoms of the peritonitis, and the prolonged history more than forty eight hours. So after resuscitation, laparotomy with reduction. The Cope's method is called when they reduce the uh, small bowel, the the one part of the bowel. And the irreducibility of the gangrene, you can uh, you can see on the inspection, there's a patient is a gangrene of the bowel in the resection. Valvulus is the twisting of the exit rotation of the part of the bowel about its mesenteries. So this is following type: the small intestinal valvulus and the compound valvulus. So the large bowel uh, in the large bowel, this is a patient has the cecal and the sigmoid valvulus. The cecal valvulus is the difference between the two is the cecal to is clockwise and this anti-clockwise. It's common in the female, it's common in adults, in the males. And the presentation is acute and the patient's acute presentation in young patients. So the classical feature of the obstruction, the chronic presentation in the elderly and the palpable tympanic swelling in the midline on the left side of the abdomen. The barium show Burdwick deformity, and with the plain radiograph shows the dilated bowel loops across the abdomen from the right to left. The two fluid levels you can see here. This is a cecal valvulus. 
in the X-ray, and this is on the CT scan. You can see the level in the dilated part of the colon. So in the cecal valvulus, it is viable. Then fixation of the cecum to the iliac fossa or cecostomy if the patient has the perforation or is about to perforate the impending perforation. If ischemia or right hemicolectomy, remove the part of the ileum, uh, cecum and the ascending colon. So then sigmoid valvulus, it is viable. The fixation of the sigmoid to the posterior abdominal wall, again, uh, like in the cecum. And then if the patient is a non-viable, then sigmoid colectomy. So this is the cecum, this is the ileum, and this is the dilated cecum. And this is the sigmoid. So the paralytic ileus is, uh, is the failure of the transmission of the palacistic valve, secondary to neuromuscular failure. Causes are the post-operative, the most common cause is the post-operative. And the intra-abdominal sepsis, like the patient has the pelvic abscess, uh, some diaphragmatic abscess, and the, uh, the tuberculosis, and the perforation, and the metabolic cause is the uremia and the hypokalemia. So the patient has a reflex ileus, the fracture of the spine, fracture of the lower ribs, and the retroperitoneal hemorrhage. This also causes of paralytic ileus. So the clinical features are abdominal distension, pain is absent. Pain is another feature of the paralytic ileus, especially the vomiting and the distension only. Postoperatively, uh, if the patient is not uh, going to take orally because of the uh, abdominal distension, so on the no return of the bowel sounds and the no passage of the flatus. So here you can see the small bowel and the large bowel. In the paralytic ileus, the patient has no pain, but the distension, the vomiting. See, here is the small bowel and the large bowel. Small bowel and the large bowel. So the treatment is manage the primary cause, like the, the patient is the hypokalemia, treat the hypokalemia, the nasogastric decompression, the fluid balance. If ileus is a prolonged, need CT scan abdomen to rule out sepsis, rule out uh, the abscess, the pelvic abscess, the may need lepotomy. Thank you. If you have any, any question. And the question is, can you please repeat vomiting? What are the bizarre, what are the Indians and what they cause? So please repeat management of what? So the question is, what was the? So so the bezoir or uh, these are the bezoir. These are the hairs, the mostly the patient with the, with the psychological illness, they are eating their hair. So the, the patients are the young females and they eat their hair. So the patient has the psychological problems, they get uh, obstructed into the stomach. And this is the shape of the stomach, you can see the, after the pylorus and this is the fundus. So this is the base wire. And here, this is the food particles which get obstructed in the stomach on the small bowel. And the adhesion, adhesions I have shown. Mm -hmm. So 
here because of the previous surgery previous surgery and when we use the uh, the gauze and the excessive use of the gauzes cause the friction of the small bowels rough surface and then the adhesions cause the obstruction the the small bowel get attached to each other and the proximal the patient has the dilatation hmm here is a question sir please repeat management repeat management of what the whole of the intestinal obstruction this is a general treatment general management is here this you can uh, here is the gi drainage gi drainage means is the naso gastric tube drainage with the empty the stomach and the fluid electrolyte balance and the relief of the obstruction is the surgery of the obstruction so you can see the conservative treatment is the naso gastric aspiration by the rice tube is the ng tube iv fluids rehydration nil per oral Foley's catheter to measure the urine output, check the temperature and abdominal examination eight hourly, and the broad spectrum antibiotics and the painkillers. ये डॉक्टर खाली हां ये मेरा मैं लास्ट ही क्वेश्चन था ये हां सर एंड कर ले सर फिर हां बस कर दो चलो थैंक यू सर अल्लाह हाफिज़ थैंक यू अल्लाह हाफिज़